You ever seen that movie Cocoon? This feels like that movie Cocoon. <clears throat> that nineteen eighty five classic? Yeah. We're reclaiming our youth. Oh the green, right? The, with the green. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> oh look I'm glowing. I well, good morning, guys. Welcome back. We're working on the man cave. That's exciting to me. Is it exciting to you? In previous episodes, we built a sawmill shed from scratch using stuff we had laying around and in the forest. We took everything and we put it together. And uh, now we are building a man cave slash she shed inside the sawmill, a place to hang out, to warm your fingers, maybe to have a coffee or a tea, some place to relax and just, you know what, enjoy the process of milling wood. I don't know, do they still have cigar rooms? That's the kind of thing I'm, I'm, I, I envision as like a cigar room, even though I don't smoke. Hmm. Anyways, maybe it's a coffee house. Like relaxing, you got smooth jazz playing in the background, that sort of thing. Anyways, we've got a lot of cool things to add to this man cave. And I don't really want to oversell it, but I, I don't really want to undersell it. So let's get started. I got some new toys. And by toys, I mean lighting. I love lighting. Lighting is exciting to me. I like any kind of lighting. And this is the Lai Lim Li. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that company name correctly, but that's what it is. The link will be in the description below. What they have sent me are these two LED lights. <laughs> Dance potty. It's following my voice. <laughs> They've got really powerful magnets on the back of them that stick to the side of your pool. So if your pool happens to be metal, you just stick it to the side. And if your pool happens to be plastic or concrete, they've got these little pucks which you glue to the side and then you can actually attach it like that to the side of your plastic pool. They're remote controlled, see? And what's cool about them is you can change the color of the thing, or you can go like smooth transition where it transitions from one color to the next color. Or you can like, you know, if you're having a party, you can have like flashing. <laughs> That's pretty, oh, they're really crazy bright. And the other thing about them is they're completely waterproof, obviously, because they go right inside your pool. IP68, I'm not sure what that means. I think it means really deep pool. And it's uh, it's got like a USB port at the back of their seal so you can take them out, plug them in. They last a really long time. 3,000 milliamp hours worth of power. That's a lot of power. 30 to 40 hours before it needs to be recharged. All right, so there we go. We got our two magnetic portable cordless lights. All right, we're gonna try the green one. We're in the pool, we're gonna stick it under. Whoa, look at that. Oh, and it just, there, stick to the side of the pool. We're gonna check that out at night time to see how bright that is. That's pretty cool. What I like is the smooth transition. So you don't have to pick a, the same color. You can just have a smooth transition time. We can dim it too. Look at that. It's got all the functions. That's pretty cool. Say you're not off grid and you got your pool and it's in your backyard and you wanna hook up really cool lights. This is the Lai Lim Lee plug-in version of the exact same light. Well, it's not exactly the same. It's super bright. Say if you want really, really bright. This thing is a 20 watt LED bulb. And the other thing about it is it's controlled by an app on your phone. You can control it remotely. You can change the color by just turning the dial. I'm gonna put this thing in the pond to light up the pond at night to give me a nice ambient glow. It's gonna be pretty cool. So I'm gonna set those guys in the pond just to uh, see how it looks. And did I mention there is a 26 foot long cord so you can pretty much get it anywhere you want. A big thanks to Lai Lim Lee today for giving us these underwater LED lights. They're really cool. So if you have a dark space that you need to illuminate say it's a pond or say it's a pool or even a hot tub or anything you need to pretty much light up underwater, be sure to check the link in the description below to pick yourself up a pair today. They're pretty cool. All right, now that we've got our lights installed, we can get back to work on our man cave, but you gotta stay tuned to the end of the video because I want to show you just how cool these things are. Hey Don, it looks like you got our special guest. A grizzly. A grizzly? What is this? The mini cubic stove. It we've the, uh, uh, grizzly model. We've used this guy a couple times. This is my favorite. This is this is a larger version of the mini cubic stove. This is the grizzly. So 
Um, these are one of my favorite wood stoves. What we're doing is, why do we have it set up outside, you ask? Because we're, we're actually seasoning it. Because when it's brand new, it's got all the, uh, the brand new paint on it. And uh, anytime you get a wood stove, if you can, Season it outside, and then you don't get that uh, that kind of that baked off smell inside. So we're gonna we're gonna light her up, and and there's an added benefit of the fact it's freezing out today. How is it so cold? I don't know why it's so cold. It give us a nice little place to warm our our fingers. Fine. There's no kindling around here, right, Don? Nothing. No kindling. We have to really search high and low for kindling. There she going. She's ripping. There's a wick on both ends. That's what I feel like I've been doing is burning my candle on both ends. Okay, to bring up the speed on the progress of the build, we ended up, I ended up stuffing a, another two by four and a piece of sill gasket underneath to prevent the drafts from coming in. And then what I've done, actually I did it on both sides. So there's my sill gasket. And then what I did was I took a piece of um, roll roofing, kind of like uh, ice and water shield, and I folded it underneath. And that's gonna allow the rain, whatnot, moisture to kind of run down and then out into the dirt and not inside the cabin. This guy here, these little things here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna seal them up with um, this metal tape, which I kind of started over here. I'm gonna seal every one of the boards and then the battens still haven't been on outside. There was a debate on whether or not I was going to add insulation to this thing. And my first thought was to put in um, sawdust insulation. I had some hydrated lime I picked up and I was gonna mix a batch of hydrated lime and sawdust and stuff at my walls. And then I thought, I don't really want a place that mice can hide because this isn't a, uh, you know, you're not here all the time. And anytime a place is vacant uh, for any length of time, mice tend to move in. And uh, if they've got a wall full of sawdust, I imagine I'm just gonna have a sawdust um, slash mouse pee fiasco. So I'm not even gonna insulate them. I'm not insulating this wall. Because I have a wood stove, I'm not really concerned about heat. That grizzly from medium cubic wood stoves throws off a pile of heat. So when I'm in here and I got my stove rocket, I'm not really worried about, about it. So I'm gonna air seal more so than insulate. All right, next up is I've got to find some boards and battens for this exterior wall. I've got to go to the lumber store to find some. Well, as it turns out, the lumber store isn't very far. I am looking for something that gives me about six inches of material. This one, that's eh, kind of got a weird thing right up there. That's no, like, not ideal. Um, this guy here might work. I cut it down previously. It looks like it's got enough material from here to there because I don't need that tall. This one over here is not too far away either and it's really tall. You can see the bug. The bug got it and then the, uh, the holes. Oh, she's poker straight though. Look how, look how straight that is. I find if you peel the bark off of them while they're standing, they, uh, they, they last longer standing because I don't really want to take them down unless I have a use for them. I think eventually I'm going to be taking them all down all the dead ones but while I'm waiting I might as well peel some also it's kind of fun it's easier to find them when they're bright
Well, it's a good thing we got a sawmill shelter because, uh, well, it's raining cats and dogs out there. We barely even talk over that. Some people really like that sound, that, uh, that rain on a tin roof. You can just kind of just fall asleep. It's like white noise. It's crazy raining right now. Look how much rain we got. Look at, can you guys see how much rain there is there? You can actually I'll put you guys out in the rain. See the rain? Look at the rain. Crazy amount of rain. So wet, but it's joyous being in here because you got you got all this all this space for activities during the rain. It's no longer you got the inside but the outside. People are have been talking about closing the front of it in. I'm not sure I would all summertime. Maybe in the winter, maybe like have some curtains or something, some sort of articulating sliding door that might work too, but I kind of like that north face sort of light. It gives you a really nice light. We're just finishing up this wall. Don's just making a piece. Figure out a big rambling. I'll ramble while he cuts. Some people would look at this and say it's a defect. I think it's a feature. This is when the log kind of dies. And then what happens is uh, the bugs go in there and then the fungi, the fungi move in and discolor the wood, giving that, uh, that it's usually like a blue hue, like stain to it. And then it's got the little holes in it. Those are pretty kind of cool. It's got the uh, old uh, saloon look on the outside of this guy, which I really enjoy. I just got to put the battens on. That'll be a later date. I got to put the uh, barn door on here, so I'm not sure about the thickness, but uh, I think that turned out pretty darn good. Even the threshold piece where it, uh, where it comes over, you got uh, even right there. I just got to add a little bit of mortar into there where it didn't quite get to the end, but my cookies are still very much intact and very much stuck to the bottom. I'm very pleased with how well that has held up. Whenever you're buttoning up two pieces of dissimilar material, it's always kind of good to give a little bit of an overhang or they call it a reveal. And that gives a nice finished look as opposed to trying to butt it up exactly like face because what otherwise you crack when you look on one side or the other but this way you've got none and that being said if you're ever doing like paint grade you always want to beat a caulking down here if it's uh if it required don's just working on the air ceiling we're adding more tape to the inside of this guy so it's going to air tight this guy off um we're probably going to fill up some of the wood holes too but uh what the good thing about this wall is that it's screwed on so if we ever need to get access to it we can actually unscrew the boards from the other side and uh and get into it so what do you think don Looks good, i'm told and uh, the internet tells me as well is that uh, mice do not like the feeling or sound of tinfoil um, so we're going to do our best. We're going to, we're going to actually, we're going to fill those guys and, uh, hopefully they don't come in. And if they do come in, there's really no food in here to, for them to eat. So hopefully they don't uh, stick around. All right. We got our all air sealed. Now we've got all our tuck tape around our seams. We are not insulating this building simply because, uh, well, we're not going to. That's, uh, that's pretty much the if, dans, or buts. And we've changed the direction of both windows. This opens out now. That also opens out. And, uh, the reason being is because well, once we have our fireplace in here, it might open up and actually hit it. And uh, that being said, it gives us more room in the building. If we have it open, say on uh, rainy days like today, we'll have shelter from the rain over here. All right, now that we've gotten this far, we've got to go back to the forest and pick up the other logs. We want to make our bench and we need a really nice piece of wood to do that. And I think the one that's left there is like poker straight, got no knots in it. And I think it's an ideal bench suitable for the saws mahal we're moving right along we got to do the batten still the battens will really clean this up you guys can't really tell on camera that there's a gap but uh, that'll clean that that mess up you won't see the fasteners anymore it'll give us a nice even kind of finish like the lipstick the old lipstick on the uh the pig really pleased the way it looks right now but you know what carry on all right just a little bit of an update we've got our walls on and i ended up got our Trim on our windows, but this is going to be our uh, thick stuff. Because what I want to do is I put a batten along here and I want it thin to give itself a nice little reveal on the uh, on the side of it. So you can see how we worked out beside the post. We just kind of shimmed the, uh, actually we shaved, shaved a little bit of the post to kind of give it a little taper. We tucked it right in at the door. 
all trimmed out. But, uh, worked out really nice. This stuff's really nice stuff. This stuff, this is the ash log that basically had like no knots in it, which is crazy. Like there's one knot here, but I think that's the only one. It's looking, looking mighty fine. This is the beast. We gotta move out. Look at the size of that and how pretty that log is. That is the prettiest log ever. Look, how, look at the size of it. It's huge. Oh, this is the ultimate test of the log arch. I don't know. <laughs> That's going to be something. Are you play, we play some bets on this thing? Solid. It's solid, but like, what about so is th that, th this? Is solid, and that like, it's whether or not everything as a whole. Like we got the winch. Is this cable gonna hold? This is gonna be something. I'm gonna. I don't know. I'm sitting on the fence whether or not this is going to work or catastrophically fail. Oh well. Let's give her a whirl. That worked out pretty good. We got her a lot of the way. Look how far we dragged that thing all the way up there. It's always uphill, but we got her position now. We just got to get the uh, log tongs. We're going to attach them there and then lift the butt end of the log up and uh, we secure it here and off we go to the mill. I think when you're doing this sort of thing, you got to be more stubborn than a log. Can't give up. Don't let the log win. No such thing as a log winning. Even if it did take a couple redesigns but you know what it seems to be holding up square that's probably the, one of the biggest logs i will ever try to move with this thing oh, who am i kidding there'll be a bigger log there's always a bigger log all right so the plan is to get this log up on the mill my tractor is not strong enough to lift it so i've devised a plan of putting a couple of beefy timbers to support the log as i push it up the ramp onto the sawmill Hopefully this works. Oh, it's a good day to break things. Should work, should work. That is a monster log. The size of that thing. We got a little muddy on the way here, but that's the cool thing about bark is you can just peel the bark off. I knew I wanted a workbench in my man cave. So I started with some old square tubing I had laying around. I cut a bunch of pieces. And once I had all the pieces cut, I laid them out in, to ensure that I had four identical legs. Now I could have built these things out of wood, but I kind of wanted to change it up a little bit because too much wood is a bad thing. So once I had everything set up, I used my welder, stuck them all together. And then once that was done and they were cooled down a little bit, I used black spray paint and gave them a nice coat of paint. Once they were dry, I brought them over to the man cave and I installed them, ensuring they were plumb and level using my laser. Once that was done, I needed a top. So I had some two and a quarter inch thick ash slabs milled up and I fit them around the post. Once that was done, I needed to put a top on it. So I used some of the slabs of ash that I had milled up previously, two and a quarter inches thick, 
I used a template in order to get around my post and then I used a chainsaw to cut my hole and I used an angle grinder with a sanding disc on it to smooth the hole out in order to fit around the post. And then I used a metal sleeve in order to give a nice smooth transition. And then I fit all the other boards on top of my bench, completing the bench to something really substantial. We're at the stage now, we're installing our little fireplace. And to be exact, our cubic mini stove, which is the grizzly version of this thing. What I've done is I've actually made a spot for it. I've made a backer plate that allows me to install my stainless steel heat shield. It's gonna go right there. I had to flatten out the surface so it sat flat, but that little guy there is going to attach with a couple of screws and then it'll be stationary. So it's like, these are originally designed for uh, like boats and RVs. So there was a lot of shaking going on in those particular structures. I hope there isn't that much shaking going on in this particular structure, but just to be sure I am going to uh, fasten it to the wall because I don't want it falling over. It'll also act as a theft deterrent because if anybody breaks in here, they want to steal my stove. It's, it's firmly secured to the building. What this guy comes with is a little wall bracket. It's kind of like hanging a TV and they give you these little spacers and these go between the stainless steel heat shield and your combustible surface. It allows you to have like a standoff so it's not, it doesn't have intimate contact with the back because anytime you're installing a fireplace, you always want kind of like that separation. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna install this little guy here through this guy do all four at the same time. Because it's important to put the spacers, otherwise you crush the, uh, the heat sheet. And they come with Robertson screws. That's convenient. Take the stove. your hand back there and you reattach the screws. Oh, we've got the heat shield all the way up. I ended up uh, not having enough heat shield so I made one out of some stainless steel I had kicking around but I got the heat shield so this is going to be the backing it goes all the way up and then it's secured there. Well, that took a little bit longer than I anticipated because I had to uh, cut around the inlay that's in the ceiling. So I put a little bracket up there, as you guys can see there, and uh, to fit it into the ceiling. But otherwise, it's uh, it's pretty much installed. I'm going to give this guy a little test run a little bit later. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. This is really cool. Actually, this is a, this is a new feature for the Cubic Mini. Grizzly is the uh, the side water jacket. And what that allows you to do is actually uh, fill up uh, hot water and also acts as a humidifier for your cabin if you've got a little bit of problem with dry air. That thing will uh, will help will help uh, keep it moist. And then you can just got the spout. You can take off a cup of hot water if you want, and making tea or coffee. But yeah, I'm looking forward to using that guy a little bit later on. Been working on these battens every time I get a little bit of patience in order to do them because there's a heck of a lot of them and it's always a question of what comes first. So I have a piece of trim next to the post so I have to put that in first before to put the battens in but if I want to put that thing on the side to fill that in I need the baseboard in. Oh so it's like what do I do first? So I gotta do the baseboard but then I need these blocks so I made blocks. The idea behind these baseboards is that I can access to the uh, the channel that's inside here if I want to run wires in the future or whatever. But uh, yeah, so that, that's gonna be removable. So this is what I've come up with is a piece of uh, live edge from the uh, sawmill. It's a piece of ash, it's still got the bark on it. Maybe the bark will stay, but that guy I'm probably gonna piece in there and then it'll finish up my, uh, my wall so I can actually get my battens on. 
I did a mock-up of the uh, Princess Auto logo just for uh, just for fun to see what it would look like on the ash, and then I varnished it. You can see the dark and the grain comes out of that. So ideally, once the walls are uh, are dry, that's kind of what the kind of like the honey colored. That's what the ash looks like when it's varnished. So that's the idea there. But uh, the Princess Auto logo is definitely a it's a fancy logo. You can see it's, it's engraved right inside the wood. You'd actually fill that with paint if you wanted to and then give you a, a little bit. So there's a little bit of definition. You can always burn it deeper. You can actually set that laser to cut. I haven't uh, tried that yet, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, signs, modern signs, as opposed to having street signs on the wall. Well, I'm always one to say that if it's sunny, it's time to make hay and it happens to be extra sunny today. I am going to be taking advantage of the sunshine because it's not sunny that long in Canada. So uh, when it's, uh, you gotta take advantage of it when it is. So it's like, you know, a high of 26. I don't exactly know what that is in American. It's warm anyways, it's shorts and t-shirt weather. And uh, we're heading on down to the pond and uh, we got some new additions that we're gonna install in that guy. Uh, it's been a busy week working on this, uh, working on the Sawsma Hall. So anyways, let's go check out down there right now. Mike, you're back. I'm back. What are you cooking today? Potatoes again. Potatoes again. This is yeah. like, what is this a repeat? This is a repeat. We were supposed to do something different, but uh, we had a change of plans. So we have to make up for it. And I had some potatoes on me, so. You're, I see you're cutting them round this time. Yeah, so the, the idea is we're gonna have a nice crispy bottom. Ooh. So we almost make like chips. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the idea. And then we're gonna have the, the soft mashed potato ones at the top. And then uh, it's gonna be great. I think we got what, steaks yep. this time? We got steaks, we... Grant, Grant is here, Grant. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. It's always morning. Yep. We uh, we got some prime rib steaks. You got thick ones this time? Fresh from Costco. Costco, you got the uh, extra thick that ones you said are not good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we're sous vide cooking them. We're sous vide, we got them a sous vide. We got them on the, uh, we got them attached to the EcoFlow which um, are sous vide with, how many hours are we? Uh, we're doing it for a well, while. We're up to uh, just over five hours now. Five hours sous vide. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's uh, it's French for underwater. We're underwater cooking a steak. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna grill them on the barbecue. We got the, we got the um grill fired up. We've got an especially smoky fire over here. Um, we've got the, uh, the grill fired up. We're gonna let that cool down. And then we've got, uh, I'm just doing some, again, spring cleaning. I've got the pool heater fired up because that's uh, that's our plan. But uh, yeah, burn barrel, two birds, one stone. We've got uh, heating the, uh, the pool up as well as cleaning up some debris. The frogs are doing frog things. We've got our fish in there. I don't know if you guys can see them. They're just below the surface. I'm going to wait until it gets a little bit darker out to feed them because I want to show you just how active they are. You can see them just below the surface. I don't know if you can... You can see them, there they are. All right, so we got the aerator is fired up. That's uh, from Nature's Pond Care. Condor's system right there. We've got the uh, solar panel with the aeration system. You can see it coming up there right next to the duck. We got the, we got a pair of ducks. Those are, uh, those are ducks from, I believe, Cabela's Bass Pro. Those are the Cabela Bass Pro ducks. And we've got our, our, um, our food plot going here. It's coming up from last year. This is our uh, deer feeding area. You can see this stuff, I don't know, it looks like Swiss chard sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's coming up and that's our, our deer feed. So the deer come in from the marshy area and uh, they feed on this stuff. And that's also from Cabela's Bass Pro, which actually I'm surprised it come up. I guess it's perennial. It's coming up, it's green. A little bit of grass in there too. It's luscious. Spring is in the air, green is on the ground. Norway spruce are doing really fine. They're not brittle at all. They're nice. The needles are staying on them. They like it when you pet them like that. There's a frog. I don't know if there's a frog on top of another frog. There is. Can you see that? I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a frog on top of another frog. That's the first time I've seen that. Can you see that? It's right, right there. I don't want to bug them. They're busy. The other Norway spruce. This guy's doing fine too. You can see. Doing actually quite well. What kind of flower is that? It's kind of neat. I don't even know. See? 
update on my clones. The ball appears to be still there. The top of the tree still appears to be alive. I probably should give that some water. It's been raining a heck of a lot, but uh, it is it is kind of dry. Maybe I'll give it some water. There's this guy here. He's uh, he's doing something too. So you got some. They're still not. They're kind of stunted. So I don't know if they're if it's taken. I don't want to open it yet. It hasn't been like 20 days yet, but I will give it a little bit of a drink. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see if that actually sprouts some roots. There's been a couple people on the channel that have asked for updates on previous builds. Well, the other day I gave you an update on the spider hole. It's not doing very good, but uh, we're just kind of waiting for it to dry up a little bit and then we're gonna probably rectify it. I'm not sure exactly how. So we're gonna take a look at the cube. I haven't been in the cube in uh, at least a week or so. Let's take a look inside. So this is, uh, this is in the cube. The cube is, uh, well, still very waterproof, still very intact, still very standing up. We're on, uh, is it year? two, two and a half of, uh, what I say, 20 years? For those who have that view of that, uh, put it in your calendar, mark it off. So we're at two years. We've got uh, 18 years left to go on the lifespan of this cube. And uh, as you guys know, this thing was wrapped in um, the Schluter membrane, which is traditionally used for shower pans. Uh, we wrapped the outside of it and then we um, parged it basically with, with concrete. It's handling well the uh, cubic mini stove still rocking even the boot gasket that's around it we got no leaks coming in which uh there was some question on whether or not that was going to hold up but uh clearly it has it hasn't rained it's gone through three winters um yeah ceiling completely intact there seems to be a little bit of uh, water damage at the door area here but that's that's kind of typical because of the 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 bumper the bumper bed that's that's fine that's not a big deal but uh yeah but your typical kind of settling we've got a little cracking in the corner bead right there ever so slight but uh, again that's probably like your thermal expansion and contraction that's not a that's not a big deal but uh yeah otherwise we got uh pretty good our deck is doing okay if we want to go up on the on the second the second tier, let's see if the, uh, how this is doing. This is the, our Astro Turf, which is our Rymar grass and our railing is all fully intact. You can see how sturdy it is. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of weathered. It's quite a weathered, very nice. I don't know, this is like the most, like the favorite spot up in the trees. You guys look down there, you can see the fish. Oh, I can see the fish. I don't know if you guys can see the fish. There's a view of the deck with the solar panels. I'm surprised my potted cedar tree is doing as well as it is, but it's doing really well. Probably going to get a whole lot brighter in this area here this year because we got this ash tree and this ash tree and this these two ash trees here are dead. And then that ash over there is dead. So there's going to be a lot of firewood coming. There's another ash tree there. This one here is elm. That's an elm tree. That one's dead as well. And this elm is doing really well. I kind of want shade in this elm. It's my favorite elm here. It kind of leans over top of the, of the cube. And it gives a nice canopy. The A-frame seems to be completely intact our cookies that we put on the wall are firmly planted still imagine that even after they've cracked they're still firmly attached i'm pretty happy i didn't actually mortar those in because i like the look of the way it is you can see all the way up there it's weathered the uh our board and bat and siding well it looks like we got a little bit of a crack there no big deal I like, I kind of like the look of that. I like the look that it's got the little crack in it. They're periodically got little cracks. Those are kind of cool. I like it. Our sill, which is uh, sloped out for the water to shed. Very good. And uh, yeah, inside we go, as you can see, there's no water damage or anything like that. My wife actually has been coming out here. She's writing a book. So uh, that's where she comes out here and hangs out and writes her book. 
I think she sits right there with her little, I think she's writing on an iPad. But uh, yeah, everything seems to be good. Even the around the windows, the old school windows, all good. But up there, we got no water damage anywhere. We got our cubic mini stove. Again, everything, even all the way around there, no problem up there. Everything seems to be good. Even like the floor, the floor is in good shape. There's a little bit of water here, but I think that's from condensation, which uh, comes off the glass. Like there's no way to kind of prevent that, but it's nothing like catastrophic. It's just discoloration. Not a big deal. Footings underneath. Everything looks good there. Everything's attached. Everything weather in the storm well. We got another cracked board. That's just that's just the nature of building with uh, wet wood. Especially when you mill down the center of the heart of the log, but that's not a big problem because we got uh, tar paper behind there So if there's any water that does come in not a problem. This is our post It's kind of interesting is there's like a little air gap between the post and the ground and that'll probably help But uh, yeah, it seems to be No problem There's our tar paper. So that's our waterproofing well, the easiest way to get out of cooking is just go for a walk in the bush and then when you come back most of the hard work is done i'm not a real big cook i'm not great at it kind of like you know know your limits play within them and uh i leave cooking up to the experts so they uh they seem to be what are you guys doing you guys are seasoning seasoning the potatoes i'm pe peeling garlic the, the right way or the wrong way well because you got a little bit of slack from what is it from like peeling it wrong? Yeah, apparently I'm peeling it wrong. You're supposed to smash it with your forehead or something? I think so, yeah, and then just like rub your face in it. I, I, I don't know, like I, I, I read that comment too and I was like, okay. Yeah, but hey, you know what? Everyone's got their own way of doing it. I prefer this way because it's more laborious and, and tedious and uh, I like a challenge. You there feel you accomplished when you're done. That's right. That's right. It's like peeling a band-aid over and over again. Well, it's like picking a scab. That's right, it's exactly it. Yes. That's right. There's our sous vide, our sous vide um, steaks. Those look good. Sous vide, the medium rare. Even in the bag, they look good. Yeah. So the sous vide, is it warm? It's warm water? Yeah, so basically like you want to cook the uh, the steak to medium rare. So that's what these in the water? To, in the water. Oh. So it cooks it evenly throughout the whole piece of meat. Like when you do it on a barbecue, it'll be like more of all done on the outside. Right. And then you're close to medium rare right in the center. Maybe okay. a little more raw, maybe a little more done, but this is gonna be consistent from one side of the piece of meat to the other. There we go. Steak hot tub. Yeah. Steak hot, that's, that's actually, that's a good one, a steak hot tub. They are. Well see, what my mom used to do is she would take, um, when she would cook sausages, she would take the sausages and boil them for three hours yep. and then put them on the barbecue for two or three hours. And that was to ensure they were cooked. I'm kidding, Mom. They were good. I like the sausages. Our asparagus came up and um, I forgot. So we got no vegetable with this, but the potato, I think is considered a vegetable. It grows in the ground. We planned on having a vegetable. Yes. What happened? There Potato are vegetables. Potatoes were our backup. Mm. You can't make friends with salad. <laughs> you can't win friends with salad. I haven't even tried a steak. This is huge. I know. She's a big one. That's what she said. Oh boy. Well, yeah, this is cooked like very medium well. So, they guys, you guys did rare? Yeah. yeah. Rare. I did medium well. I don't know if you can. It's trying to focus on me. I have to hide behind a the steak. <laughs> there. You can see that all the way through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's fish feeding time. Watch this. Take a look at that. That is insane, the amount of light that's coming off there. And I got the app sitting in front of me that I can actually change the color. 
That is wild. That's cool. And then you put the mic on and then it changes color based on your speech. That is wild. I wonder how the fish like that. <laughs> yeah, Grant's saying it's, uh, it's lighting up the trees. You can't really tell on camera that much, but it's pretty cool. That's neat. Like, look how bright that is. That's just white gradual change. So it's light, like lighting up the whole area. And there's a shot of the battery operated hot tub slash pool ones. Those are pretty cool too, actually. They don't give off as much light, but in a smaller area, they're ideal. That's pretty cool. You actually still see the ones out in the pond. Those are crazy. All right, we got the we got the tub up to temp. We had it up a little too high. We had to actually add a little bit more cold water to cool it down a little bit. The frogs. This is the frogs. They are almost like causing human damage. Yeah, it's like it's it's ridiculous how loud they are. Definitely. I don't know if the camera picks it up that well. They're loud. It's like, it's like nap time. It's nap time in the... <laughs> as soon as you get in here. It's like, oh. As long as you don't stick your head right in the middle of the, of the, of the dome, it doesn't sound funny. Yeah. You gotta stay at the edge. You gotta stay at the edge. Well, if you guys are looking to get yourself some underwater LED lights, these things are very cool. We've, we've been using them for a couple of hours now. The pond is lit up like a Christmas tree. The hot tub is lit up. It's, it's doing its thing. As you can see, they're very bright. They're pretty awesome. The link will be in the description down below if you want to pick yourself up a pair of these guys. Uh, you know, pick one that suits your uh, your pool or your hot tub or your water feature you want to light up. Like you get a backyard pond or something like that. These things are cool. Like just, you know, I could see them in a backyard just like lighting up a water feature. Like it's neat. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up on this one. This has been a long week of Saws Mahal of the old man cave. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and Join me in the next one.